Hello, welcome back to Andrea Fontana Beauty. If you're new here, I'm Andrea. I am a professional makeup artist, licensed esthetician, and I specialize in bridal makeup. So I do a lot of makeup during bridal season and I get asked a lot of questions because there's a lot of clients coming in and out of my chair on wedding days. As you can see by the title of this video, I'm gonna be going over the top 10 frequently asked questions that I get asked by clients when I'm doing their makeup. So whether it be brides, bridesmaids, moms, client lessons, anything like that, even if it's just special event, I tried to come up with what I think are the 10 most asked questions. Some of them have to do with me, some of them have to do with applying makeup, there's a little bit of everything. If you're new here, if you like beauty content, food content, secondhand living content, those are the things that I like to share here on this channel, so be sure to subscribe if you think that that sounds like something you'd enjoy. These are in no particular order. They're just as I thought of them. So, the first question, which honestly might be the most frequently asked question ever. No, no, I'm just kidding. Number four is, I always get at least one person asking this every single bridal party. What is a primer and why do I need it? So, primer, if you've never heard of it, in makeup terminology, you've probably heard of it in painting. In painting, it is the step before you actually paint your color. It kind of preps your space that you're going to be painting to make sure that everything goes on smoother, it lasts longer once your paint is, you know, dry and everything. And a primer for your makeup is honestly pretty similar. Primer is kind of a blanket term, so there's, I mean, there's brightening primers, there's hydrating, there's mattifying, there's pore reducing. I mean, there's so many different kinds. Some that just specialize in making your makeup stay on longer. But in reality, a primer is best. And I think, do I think every single person needs a primer? No. If you have no issues with your makeup staying on all day and performing how you want it to, you don't need a primer. I would say if you don't currently use one and you're having issues with your makeup lasting, if you're super oily, it might be worth looking into. Definitely for like a special event, you want to make sure your makeup stays put. It's a step that I don't ever skip. But personally, I don't always use one day to day in makeup. Now, the main purpose of a primer is to be that layer in between your skincare and your makeup and it preps your skin to make sure that your foundation goes on really nicely. It is especially useful if you're oily because it can act as a barrier between your skin's natural oils and your foundation and it can prevent it from breaking it down. So if you have that extra step in there, you can kind of block those natural oils and then you get longevity in the wear of your foundation. So it's really useful. If it sounds like this is something that you are dealing with, then a primer might be a great option for you, but don't discount all primers if you try one and it doesn't work for you. It might not be the right primer for your specific needs. And like I said, there's so many different ones. I'm always happy to answer questions if you have those. So um, leave comments down below. My personal favorites that I use in my kit, I keep two. I mean, technically three if you count MAC Fix Plus, which once in a while I'll spritz on somebody beforehand for longevity if that's something they deal with as an issue previously. But my two favorite primers are Professional by Benefit, the original formula. I love using that one on anybody with texture, um, super fine lines. It kind of depends on the area of your face. If you have fine lines like under your eyes, I wouldn't necessarily put it there because we don't want to add too much product under the eyes. But when it comes to pores or um, say acne where there's texture, or like for me with my KP, it can be smoothing for that reason. Love it for that. Also does a really great job of mattifying for oily skin. And then I also love the Too Faced. This is the only product, I personally don't shop from Too Faced. The only product I will buy from them is the Hangover RX primer because it's, I think it's the nourishing primer because I really do love it. And it's a really great product and it just works so well on my kit. So it's my one exception. But other than that, I don't shop from Too Faced and that's a whole other story. But, if you like makeup, you probably already clued into that. So yeah, those are my two favorite primers. I always get compliments on how great they smell whenever I use them on clients, which is really funny. There's always one person who loves the smell of professional and comments also on the smell of Hangover RX. Sometimes I use both. Never on top of each other though. They don't mix well. Like you can't like hydrate and then put one over because they, um, the professional one is silicone based and so it will pill and it will not look good if you try to mix those two together. So hydrating goes in areas that need hydration or pumping and then the other one goes in the other area. But again, that's me really going into depth. And if you want a whole video on primers, 
you let me know and I can share my favorites because I certainly have tried a lot of them. But those are the two that I currently keep in my kit and use on clients. Number two, how do I take eyelashes off? Again, I often come across people, I, I'm putting false eyelashes on them for the first time and they're like, yeah, I wanna try them. And then we put them on and they're like, how do I take them off? What do I do? Cause it, I don't know. Something about it being your eyes, it feels really scary, but I promise you it's very easy. In order to take a strip lash off, you're going to simply hold your eyelid taut on the top and you're gonna start from the outside because usually that's where the longest part of the false lash strip is. And you're gonna take what is obviously the false lash and you're gonna gently peel it away while holding your eyelid taut. So kind of just If it hurts, you're pulling your actual lashes, so stop. I've never had an issue with it just peeling off, but I tell people that if you feel like it's really on there um, and it's making you nervous, again, if it's your first time, it can feel like, oh my God, this is really pulling, even if it's not. Um, but if it makes you nervous, just take a little bit of eye makeup remover on a Q-tip and kind of brush it over the area where the glue is, let that sit for a few minutes and then peel it off and it should come right off, no problems. But it should not be pulling out your lashes. They are designed to be peeled off at the end of the day after use which if you have high quality lash, you can then clean it off with makeup remover and reuse a lash, which is great once you get all the glue and everything off of that. So some of the more expensive lashes you can reuse in um, like up to 20, 30 times. So totally depends on your lash. But yeah, that's how you take them off. If it's individual lashes, you it's a different glue and you wanna make sure that you just let them fall off naturally. You don't wanna pull those out because those will pull your natural lashes off if you try to pull them off. So if you have the little individual clusters, different than lash extensions, that's a completely different thing. If you have those, you just are gonna let those fall off. They'll just kind of fall off naturally throughout the week as you wash your face and remove makeup and stuff. So that's how you take lashes off. My favorite foundations. I've said this, I think, multiple times. I've yet to try the new NARS foundation. I'm actually gonna be picking that up this week because I wanna test it out to see if it's potentially something I wanna wear for some of my wedding events, leading up to my wedding, not my wedding day, but like leading up. So I, I love NARS foundations. I think they just really nail it with all skin products. I love NARS. If I had to choose a brand that I love the most, from the most categories of products, I would say. Um, I personally don't believe that any one makeup line does absolutely every product great, so I will never give you an answer like that. Um, but the one that's come the closest, that I enjoy the most products from, is NARS. I know they're expensive, um, but I just find that their products are always worth the price tag, whereas some high-end products are really not worth the price tag, and you can find good drugstore dupes, but they're, they just always kill it. I love every single foundation I have ever tried from them, and I've been hearing really great things about the new one, so I'm really excited to go try that out. But some of my other favorites, my um, I love the original It Cosmetics CC Cream. That one is fantastic, so not like the illuminating one. They have a couple different options, but I love the original CC Plus. I think it's Your Skin But Better, I wanna say is what it's called. 50 SPF, um, it's a really great foundation. It's what I just previously used in my, I think my last video. I'm filming a lot of videos today, so I'm not quite sure on the order, but my the makeup trial that I did for my wedding, my first makeup trial, that's the foundation that I used. And I hadn't used it in a while and I forgot how much I love it. Um, it's just really great when you want full coverage. It's so comfortable and it looks so natural on the skin. So I love that one. I also really, 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 really love the um, L'Oreal Age, oh, what's it called? Age Perfect Radiant Foundation, I wanna say is what it's called. It's basically their dupe for the CC cream. And I love that one as well. It's probably my favorite foundation from the drugstore. It's hard to find. I think you can currently only purchase it at Ulta, I wanna say. I may have seen it at Target in store once or twice, but it's kind of hard to find. It's not in every drugstore. But I also think that L'Oreal is my favorite drugstore brand. They just kill it with lip, concealers, uh, skin products, mascaras, love L'Oreal. So those would be my favorite foundations. Yeah, pretty much NARS, IT, and L'Oreal are my go-tos. So number four, this is my number one most asked question. Do I airbrush myself every day? <laughs> now, <laughs> I think 
because I have access to an airbrush machine, people probably assume like, if this is what you do, like you must do it to yourself every day. A, I don't wear makeup as often as you think that I do. I truly only wear it when I'm doing makeup. So for wedding days on the weekends, if I'm going somewhere and have a special event or I'm filming a YouTube video. Those are really the only three instances. If I'm just like working from home or like have some clients in my studio, I typically don't wear a lot of makeup. It's just a personal preference and I choose not to spend my time putting makeup on in the morning. But I find that if I were to force myself to apply it every single day, I lose some of the creativity and the fun that I have with applying makeup. So, I mean, some days I'll wake up and have nowhere to go and be like, I want to wear purple eyeshadow today. That happens. But for the most part, I don't wear a lot of makeup um, day to day. So for that reason, I don't end up airbrushing myself. But the main reason is because the whole airbrush system has to be cleaned when you're done using it every single time. So on a wedding day, I don't have to clean it in between clients unless their foundation shades are very different. But for the most part, I can just keep using it because I'm, you know, the, it's, it, there's not a lot of time in between. But if I was going to not have a client for say more than an hour I have to clean that clean that out so it's just not something I feel like like I already don't take the time to apply makeup every single day definitely not going to take the time to clean out my airbrush gun and get that all good and sorted at the end of every single day way too much time yes it would save me time in like applying it but it would take way more time overall because of the cleaning that comes with it so I'd rather just do that at the end of weddings, not every single day. What is my favorite eyeshadow brand? So this has recently changed, so it's interesting. It's it's something that I always get asked, I think, because I try so many different eyeshadow palettes, and obviously eyeshadow is something that you tend to have a lot of in your makeup collection if you like makeup. You, that's kind of one of the things that you collect because you like different shades and all of that, whereas, you know, the other products, you don't need as many foundations or whatever. So... I think that's why it's so popular, but before I got into Natasha Denona, I would say Juvia's Place, 100%. it's still one of my favorites, don't get me wrong. It's probably my favorite one to buy and purchase to use on hand for myself, but I love Natasha Denona. I have completely fallen into the black hole that is Natasha Denona eyeshadows. I haven't tried any other products from her, so I can't speak on, you know, the face products and those things, but I simply adore her eyeshadows. They're phenomenal and they work on so many different ages, textures, they just always blend so easily. They're really freaking expensive. So I actually don't use them personally. I only use them in my kit, which that's another thing. I guess I didn't add that in here, but my kit makeup is different than my personal makeup collection. And so my eyeshadow, my Natasha Denona stuff only stays in my kit and but there's a lot of Juvia's Place in there too. I love Juvia's Place for the price. So affordable if you're trying to get into eyeshadow or maybe you want to try a color story that you don't know if you'll use that much. Love Juvia's Place and think it's really really great pigmentation and I can't recommend them enough. I've been recommending them for years. I love them and adore them and they're a black owned brand which makes me really happy to support. So I have a lot of their palettes. Love them. Natasha Denona also up there. Um, I really like ColourPop when it's a good one. Not all their uh, eyeshadow palettes are the same formula, so those can be a little hit or miss, but again, for the price, you can't really go wrong. I'm trying to, my kit is down here on the floor, so I'm trying to like look and see what else. I love Huda Beauty. I do love a lot of her shadows too. I have, I think, three of her palettes in my kit. I do love those, but yeah, Natasha Denona. It's my favorite. Highly recommend. It's a great gift to receive. But on the same side of that, if you know somebody loves makeup, Natasha Denona, if it's in your budget, a, would be a really beautiful gift for a makeup lover if they don't already have it. But okay. Number six, do you offer lessons? I do. Everyone jokes like, oh my gosh, I wish I had more money and I could pay you to come do my makeup every single day when I do the makeup. And I always joke like, hey, if you pay me, I'll be there. I will be your personal everyday makeup artist. But in reality, um, people want to know if they can come to my studio for me to teach them what I'm doing. And absolutely, I offer kind of two different styles of makeup lessons or I don't really want to call them makeup lessons because it's truly you pay for my time and we do whatever you want to learn, whether it's makeup or skincare. Um, and the biggest 
thing I think that sets apart my lessons is that I have you bring everything that you already own. My goal is not to make you spend a ton of money. It's to see what you have, see what we can use, and then kind of fill the cracks in with maybe some recommendations of products that you could use in your routine. So I really love doing those and I think they're super fun. So if I'm, if you wanna come in and do a makeup lesson where I use my kit completely, that's just a little bit more expensive because of product. But typically, um, yeah, it's an hour of your time and if you say wanna learn how to do a specific eyeshadow look, we can do that. It's truly, you get to decide what we learn in that time. So I also will meet you at um, a store if you're local and go shopping with you, which is really fun. If you need help picking out and like learning how to swatch products and like how to navigate the aisles at Ulta or something, I'm happy to do that with you as well. My favorite mascara has always been L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black, but recently I've been really loving the Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational Mascara. It's so good. I'm like head over heels for it. And it's definitely, those are my top two. One that is, it's considered drugstore and it's very inexpensive. It's uh, actually the cheapest one I think out of all three, but it's, you can only get it at Ulta, I think, maybe Walmart, I'm not quite sure. You'd have to look online. It is the Essence What the Fake Mascara. That one's really good and it's really cheap, but you can't find it at like Walgreens or your typical drugstore. Number eight, do you hate when people are picky? I don't. I, well, okay, this is twofold. I love a picky person if they know what they want and they can get that across, if that makes sense. It's frustrating for a makeup artist when somebody says they're not picky, but they really are picky. So don't ever be afraid to say like, I don't like black eyeliner, I like brown. Like that's not picky, that's helpful. That tells me what you like and it's easier for me to do my job if you tell me that you like and dislike certain things. So I don't, it's it's your service. I'm here to do your makeup and you're paying for it. So I wanna give you the best makeup that you love. So I love when people can tell me, I don't like this, I like this. It's just frustrating if you say, oh, do whatever you want, but you actually do have a preference as to what I'm doing. You need to tell me that ahead of time, <laughs> which is why I usually ask, is there anything you don't like? before we start anything, because then we can kind of nip that in the bud. Nine, how did you get into makeup? So when I was little, um, I'd say that my first makeup came from my mom's free like Clinique bonuses. You know, the free makeup they give you that's like purple and never colors that people actually want to use, or at least back in the day they didn't want to. That's where I got my first taste of makeup and I just always really loved it. I was more of a tomboy when I was younger so I wasn't really into, um, into it when I was super young, but as I got older and like into high school, I really started enjoying it. And I always loved drawing and painting faces. So I feel like it just kind of evolved from there. Um, when I was in college, I was the friend that did everyone's makeup and it kind of just built from there. And after college, I became an esthetician and started doing makeup. So that's how I got into it. Um, it just kind of started because my mom liked makeup. The 10th question, will I do my own wedding makeup? I've answered this before, absolutely. I'm doing my own simply because I love doing makeup and I think it's a memory that I'm gonna treasure getting to do my own makeup. Um, it's one thing that will be free. <laughs> As you know, wedding planning is very expensive and I'm very excited that it will be free for me to do my own makeup. But also, yeah, I just think it's gonna be fun and I know what I like and I like that I can I don't have to do a trial, like I can do trials on myself, but I don't have to schedule it with somebody and I can just do it however I want the day of. And if I change my mind or, you know, create it as I go, then that works. Um, and yeah, I'm also an anxious person and I think it's gonna help me feel better to have something to focus on and something to do on the day of my wedding instead of just sitting there watching everybody else get ready. So yeah, I'm excited and I will obviously share what I end up going with and probably film a few more trials before the big day comes in, gosh, just over two and a half months. Crazy. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions that you would like to ask a makeup artist, always leave them in the comments below. I hope that answers some of your questions if you've ever been curious. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!